Every day, millions climb into their cars without a second thought. They trust airbags to save them in a crash. But what if I told you, airbags used to kill people? Not because they didn't work, but because they worked too well. From the 1990s to the 2000s, over 290 people, including children, died because of airbags. And yet today, they're one of the safest features in your car. So what went wrong? And how did we fix it? To understand, we need to go back to where it all began. Origins of the airbag after World War II, the world was rebuilding and innovating. Highways spread across nations. Cars symbolized freedom, but freedom came with a cost. Cars got faster. Crashes got deadlier. Seatbelts were rare. Airbags didn't exist. One mistake, and lives changed forever. In 1952, engineer John Hetrick swerved to avoid a deer. His car flew into a ditch. In a split second, he threw his arm across his daughter. They survived. But that moment sparked an idea. What if cars could protect passengers automatically? Hetrick used his Navy experience to sketch an early airbag, using compressed air, but it inflated too slowly to help. The breakthrough came in the late 60s. Engineer Alan Breed invented a system fast enough to work in real crashes. Finally, airbags weren't just an idea, they were real. By the late 90s, they became mandatory in all new cars. A win for safety, right, not quite. The unexpected killer soon, a troubling pattern emerged. People weren't dying from crashes, they were dying from airbags. By 2008, hundreds had died, many of them children. So how could a safety device be so deadly? How early airbags worked early, airbags were mechanical marvels. A steel ball, held by a magnet, would jolt forward in a crash, completing an electrical circuit. This triggered an inflator packed with sodium azide, a chemical that rapidly released nitrogen gas. The airbag inflated at 200 miles per hour, in just 30 milliseconds. Vents allowed the gas to escape as the passenger hit the bag, softening the impact. It was fast, smart, revolutionary, but deeply flawed the problems with early airbags. Early airbags deployed at full force, no matter the crash, they were designed for adult males in high-speed collisions. Even in small fender benders, they exploded with lethal energy. For children or smaller adults, it was like being hit by a fist at 200 miles per hour. The fix, multi-stage inflators, using multiple small charges instead of one big blast. In small crashes, only one charge fires. In big crashes, all fire. Then came the next upgrade, occupant sensors. These detect weight and seating position, adjusting the airbag's deployment, and to prevent false alarms, like potholes. MEMS sensors replaced the old steel ball system. These microchips track acceleration, direction, and rotation with incredible precision. But there was another hidden danger, the chemical inside the inflator. The Takata Crisis early airbags used sodium azide, effective, but toxic. It left behind dangerous compounds like sodium hydroxide. Modern systems use guanidine nitrate, just as fast, but far cleaner. But in the 2000s, one company ignored these improvements, and it cost lives. Ashley Parham's story, May 2009, Oklahoma. 18-year-old Ashley Parham gently bumped another car in a school parking lot. It was a minor fender bender, barely a scratch. But her airbag exploded, sending shrapnel into her neck. She died at the scene. The culprit, a Takata airbag, fitted in over 16 million vehicles. Takata had used ammonium nitrate as a propellant, a highly unstable compound that degrades in heat and humidity. Without a stabilizing agent, the inflator became a pipe bomb. When triggered, it exploded, launching metal fragments at bullet speed. Takata engineers warned of the risk as early as 2000. They were ignored. The result? The largest automotive recall in history and over a billion dollars in lawsuits. But no payout can replace a lost life. Trucks and airbags. The missing piece airbags are now standard in cars, but what about trucks? Volvo is the only truck maker in North America to include driver airbags in all models. Their VNL model even features curtain airbags, the first of its kind to protect and roll over crashes. But most trucks still don't have them. Why? The industry says cost. Adding airbags can cost $800, $1,200 per truck. Small fleets say they can't afford it. Some argue trucks don't need airbags due to cabin space. But in 2022, 823 truck occupants died in crashes. Half were in rollovers, precisely the type airbags can help with and nearly half of truck drivers admit they've fallen asleep behind the wheel at least once. Airbags could save countless lives if companies chose to install them, the airbag war. This isn't a new debate. In the 1970s, the US government tried to mandate airbags. Automakers fought back, hard. Chrysler and Ford lobbied President Nixon to kill the regulation, claiming it would bankrupt American manufacturers. He listened, and the regulation was killed. It took decades of advocacy, rising death tolls, and relentless pressure before airbags became mandatory in 1998. And even then, people still died because of early designs. 
the future of airbags, thankfully, innovation didn't stop there. Ford introduced inflatable seatbelts, distributing crash force over a wider area, reducing internal injuries. Volvo built the pedestrian hood airbag, cushioning a person from the hardest parts of the car during impact. Others are experimenting with external airbags, deploying before a crash, creating portable crumple zones. Airbags have come a long way, from deadly devices to precision safety tools. And while they can't prevent every crash, they can mean the difference between life and death. But sometimes the best safety system isn't one that protects you in a crash, it's the one that prevents the crash in the first place.